Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Paul Chamberlain, the Air Force guy, RV extraordinaire, coming to you from Beckley's Camping Center today to show you the all new Solus from Winnebago. Now, if you have any questions about this particular product specifically, feel free to reach out to me. My contact information will be down below as well as right here. Uh, but uh, first time joining my channel, do appreciate you showing up. Consider subscribing to stay tuned with lots of information concerning RVs from pop-ups all the way up to motorhomes. So let's get on to this motorhome. So let me go over a couple things that pertaining to the Solus and compare it to maybe what else might be in the marketplace. Closest thing it would be would be the Tofino. Some of the differences is um, number one, the Tofino is two feet shorter. It's on a 1500 ProMaster chassis, so the Dodge ProMaster chassis, where this is on the 2500 chassis. Same engines, so you're gonna expect to have about the same fuel mileage. It's gonna be 15 plus. I hear people out there saying they're getting 18 plus. I just, from a conservative standpoint, tell you you can expect 15 plus and then uh, wait to hear back and from you, the consumer, to let me know what kind of fuel mileage you're getting. So differences also is the height on this is eight foot 11 inches, so it's just under nine feet, where the Tofino is eight foot about two or three inches. So a little bit difference there. Another difference between this versus the Tofino, this is gonna actually have a wet bath, where you're not gonna have that in the Tofino. So those are kind of few, few of the uh, differences. So, but let me get inside and show you what this thing's gonna look like. So I wanna just kinda of take you inside, show you some of the inside stuff here first as we're going in. Let me give you a sneak preview of what you're looking like. This is from the front. And this is from the back, giving you an idea. Now another major difference between this and the Tofino is gonna to be the height when you're walking in here. Now this area right here where you can see it's a, it's a step down in this area. So where, this is where you're gonna be you know, in the kitchen. This is actually six foot two inches. Actually I measured it more almost six feet two and a half inches in this particular area. The bed back in the back, let me show you how that folds down. So in order to fold this bed down, what you're gonna do, there's a latch right here that is latched to the wall for where the bathroom is. What you're gonna need to do is unlatch that, and this is just gonna lay right on down. So as this lays down, now what we have to do is we have to fold these cushions over this way. Now if it comes in like that, not a big deal, just lift it up a little bit, and now, you have a nice little bed here. This is a very similar bed design that you see in the Revel. Difference being with this particular bed, this is about 58 or 59 inches wide by almost 77 inches in length when you have that bump out right there. Now, from a standpoint of you using um, you know, sheets and so forth, you could use regular queen size fitted sheets and what you're gonna do is you're gonna be pulling it, putting it right over the regular cushions here and then that will stay, that'll tuck in quite nicely because at the ends you have this little cushion here. So if you were just putting it over top of these particular ones, it's going to fit quite nicely and it's going to hold it in place for you. Now to put this back up, it's just a matter of reversing what you've done. We're just going to fold that over. This is going to be folding up and then you're just latching it back in place. Now you're able to use this if you wanted to as more of a sofa. Now so you see me standing here and I'm on the, the lifted part here because there is a little bit of storage which I'll show you here momentarily. But this is five foot nine inches here, about five foot eight to your, uh, your smoke alarm carbon dioxide detector right there. Now, I like what they've done here by raising this and making this more of a platform. What it has done is given you additional storage because most of the time you're gonna have this, this bed down. I'm gonna show you as far as that table, that's another option that they have up in there for you to, uh, for additional space and so forth. But I'm gonna show you that momentarily. But I like the fact that this is storage. Now you're gonna notice they have these little straps on here. That way there, if you wanted to strap these up and leave them up, 
while you're camping, you're able to do that to make it easy access for um, whatever you have stored under here. Now to put them back down again, very simple, just unsnap. They're just going to lay right down in there. And now it's back to being a floor. It's that simple. Now for additional storage on the one side here, you have these cabinet doors. And notice it opens all the way. Now you're going to have back in here, of course this is in case you have a flat tire. You're also going to have a nice little um, pump for your tires in the event that you uh, need air pressure. They'll have that in here. And it's a nice little storage in there. Give you an idea of the storage. Obviously there's a wheel well there, but that's some pretty good storage right there. Now I do like the way these doors latch back. As you can see, you have this where it pulls down. They're latching right on there. So now it's nice and secure as you're going down the road. Two more little cubbies back here on the opposite side for storage. And notice that it has a netting there to keep things from um, falling out. On top of that, you do have a drawer, pulls out from under the other bed. Notice how that's a full extension drawer glide, ball bearing, and it's four-sided wood. Benefit there, it's going to last you a lot longer. Right below the door, the drawer there, very easy access to your breakers and fuses. So you can actually see what you're looking at there, easily accessible, and you can actually read what the fuses and breakers go to. Before I go on and lift the top, I just wanted to show you on top, and you can see the solar panel that you have. This is what it would look like closed. And again, we're eight foot, 11 inches to the very top. You've got that one little like antenna up towards the front there. So now I like the little things that Winnebago does. They really do think things through. And one of the things they put here is this is a a movable table here. You could use it for a couple different things. Let's say you're cooking in the kitchen, you need some extra counter space, you unlock it just like you did there, you slide this leg towards you and it'll extend there. Now you've got extra counter space for when you're cooking, you're cleaning and so forth. Now let's say you say, well Paul, you know I'd like to be able to utilize it for maybe sitting down, maybe I want to go ahead and um, utilize this from a standpoint of maybe you're a YouTuber, maybe you're a blogger, what you're able to do is you're able to move it back here and do the same thing. So just pull this leg towards you as you lay it down. Now you can sit a chair here, you can have your screen pulled across here and you're able to enjoy the scenery. To put it back, again all we're doing again pulling towards you, it's going to fold right up there and then it's just a matter of lifting off. You just got to make sure you put it back in the right, right spot here and line it up with the hole here and you're back in the travel position. Now I just mentioned about the screen. This screen is going to be a little different than the screen on the other on the um, on your patio door. I'm going to show you that in a minute but this screen has a zipper right down the middle. As you can see they have it velcroed back on both sides allowing this. So if you wanted to, you have the windows on your doors where you can unzip this. If you wanted just to be able to see out through the windows, you could do that as well. So this is your Nautilus system. This is where you're going to be hooking up your city water. Now obviously you're going to have to have your door open and the hose would be able to go right up under here if you are going to be um, hooked up to city water. But the other thing is most people are probably be using this as a boondocking for boondocking experience. And all you're doing is hooking your hose up here. You're going to adjust this to where it's these nozzles to where it says power tank or power fill tank that'll fill your fresh water tank. That way there, now you're going to use your water pump and you have a water pump switch up here or one on the inside for you to have water. And that'll give you the pressure. So that's how that works. Now you say, Paul, how, how's that supposed to work? Well, your screen here actually velcros on the side right there. And you're able to pull that right off there if you wanted to. So you can have it off, but it velcros all the way down to the floor there. Um, this is your outside shower. You're gonna have two sprayer ports, outside shower ports. And what they do is they give you a hose. It looks like this. Now it has a little regular, like 
um, hose bib like you'd have at your house, a sprayer. You can go ahead and put a regular shower um, one on there if you wish to. And that would connect right here. You have hot and cold water. So you can actually use this area back here uh, for your shower if you wanted to. This area is also where you're going to be able to use city water, of course, dry camping. You're going to switch it to dry camping after you would do a power fill. The Nauto system is very, very simplified. So it, it shows you in each diagram how to adjust those four levers there. Now, as you can see, you have a red light right here. That one is for a light on the side. That way there, if you ever got to a campsite and it was dark, at least where you're gonna be hooking up your, your um, electrical cord and or your, um, your sewer hose for the gray water tank, you'll be able to see what's going on over there. Now, I already showed you that there was a solar panel on the roof, but if you want an additional solar panel, you can actually hook up some additional solar panel here. I, I would recommend that you check out uh, the Fit RV because they actually did a comparison uh, showing you how effective solar panels are, or I would say uh, not effective in essence. Now, on this particular one, you're going to have two AGM batteries, so it is giving you, it's a 105 watt hours of power so a little bit more than if you had just a regular deep cycle battery but if you're driving or if you're plugged into power you are going to go ahead and recharge those batteries now i know i just showed you where the shower is your outside shower and i know you're probably saying to yourself well geez how am i going to take a shower we're out out in the open well they thought of that as well so you have these holes on both sides here and basically what you're going to do is take these apart, you're going to put these together. They have a little pin, and you say, well, Paul, how, what good is that? Well, let me show you. So as you can see, the bar connects, and then you have this privacy curtain. It goes almost all the way down the ground, and then you're going to Velcro it to the sides of the doors. Just to kind of give you an idea with me standing behind it, I'm going to get on my tiptoes to look over top of the bar. So that is how you're able to utilize that for an outside shower. So I had mentioned earlier about being able to look out the window and like say, all you need to do is unzip this. Now if you want, you can let it lay down like this or you can just roll this up nice and neat. And as you can see, you can stuff it right back in there. It's out of the way and you're able to utilize the windows. Now the windows are tinted so it is going to cut down on some of the light and give you somewhat of some privacy, especially during the daytime. Now, one of the areas I forgot to tell you about back for additional storage back in the bed area is the storage cabinet right above the bed right there. And as you can see, it has a nice big metal bracket there in the middle, keeping things from falling out, although that door is going to stay shut quite nicely as well. Now you do have a window on either side of your bed. And again, you can roll this up so it's out of the way, nice and tucked. And then of course the windows do open so you can have ventilation. You have cross ventilation if you wish. Now on top of that, if you wanted to increase the ventilation coming through, you do have the power vent fan in the roof. Remember one important thing, if you're ever using that to pull, pull air through your camper, make sure you have some window or door open. Now the reason why I tell you to have a window or door open because that's trying to pull air through. And if you do not have something open, you're gonna end up burning up the motor at some point in time. Now the nice thing is with this particular one, this is the Max Air Fan. Benefit there, it already has a cover on it. So if it's raining out, you're still gonna be able to utilize it. One last location for storage. You're going to have to have the bed down in order to get into this cabinet here. And you can see you have one, 110 out, out, uh, outlets back there, as well as 12 volt receptacles back there. And the one is 180 watt max for any um, 12 volt item that you're plugging into it. So now let me show you how you put the pop top up very simple very similar to others what you're going to have is you have first you have you have a latch on both sides it's actually double latched on both sides you have one it's a, it's like a strap the other one is an actual crank down so what you do is on this side you're going to un, undo it just it just a push and pull 
The next thing is then you just, it's a twist lock type. You pull down, twist it off and it unlatches. So you do that on both sides. Make sure that they're free and then we just push up. And once it gets to a certain point, the struts on the outside are going to take over and push it the rest of the way up. It's that easy. Okay, so now you have the top up. Now you want to put the ladder in place. It goes on the side. What happens is you have the one that has the little hooks on it. Make sure your driver's seat is pushed forward. Otherwise, it'll bind on the seat. So you just put, put that on both sides. So that's the top piece. Now the bottom piece, you're going to notice that the, the feet are angled. And then, of course, you have the parts that insert in, inside of here. So all you're going to do is you pull it up. Little high, uh, um, eye hand coordination. And once you get it on there, just latch both, both sides. And then if you did like I did and pulled it off, just put it back up in there. And now your ladder is ready for you to use. Now, for you to pull this down, like I say, you, you have those um, handles that I showed when it was going up. And you can always use your ladder to help you with this. Make sure that you have a door or something open because what's going to happen as you're pulling this down, it's going to want to be pushing air somewhere. So you either have to have the vent open, the back windows, doors. It does help. Otherwise, it makes it very difficult for it to pull back down. So again, because I'm height deprived, I need to get up here, grab these two. And you see it as it comes down, comes down a little bit easier than it went up, in my opinion. Just make sure that you have all of your fabric on the inside. So if I were you, I'd take a walk around the outside just to double check. Now once you have it down, then what you're going to need to do is you're going to be getting your fabric pushed back behind the strap and then you just need to twist these things, lock it down on both sides and put the little strap in. It's that simple. So now that you can see it up, and by the way, I have the um, windows open up there now as well. As you're going up the ladder, you're going to notice there's a light right here. I'm going to show you where that light switch is. So it gives you a little bit of additional light, and you're going to be able to control that while you're up here. So as you're going up the ladder, you can grab on the side here if you need to as you're coming up the ladder. Now this bed is 51 inches or 52 inches wide by 79 inches long. On this side you have a screen. On that side it's just a uh, like a, a window you'd have in your pop-up so it's like a vinyl window. And then up front that's an actual screen window. Now you do have, as you can see right here, you do have a pop vent, so you can actually vent, vent that right there. That's something you want to utilize when and if you're using your LP stove. Now that we have this up, I can show you the little straps. This little strap that's going to connect right to up here when it's closed. And then this is the twist latch that you do, so that's on both sides. So you're latching that right down on here, and then this is your backup support there. Now, this thing that's hanging down, while you have it down, if you want, you can remove them. You can just disconnect it and remove it, and the handles are here if you wish. Now, on the pasture side of the bed, you do have, this is the light switch. I was telling you to light up in the front there. As you can see, it's off. Now it's back on. So that's right there, and then you have two 12-volt connectors here with a USB and then a regular 12 volt. So those are right up here for the bed access. This mattress is very very comfortable. It's actually it's almost like a memory foam. Much nicer than what you even lay on in a pop-up. So as you can see when you fold these things down they have the little velcro and you can roll it up so that it's out of the way. This for these windows. 
Now, I don't know why you'd want to do this, but up in the front, you also can go ahead and uh, pull, pull down the screen here. So you actually have access, you can actually go right on outside. I guess maybe this is kind of like a little uh, fire escape. Just give you an idea of where you're storing that ladder. You store it right up here, as well as the window coverings you have for the front windshield and your side windows, all that can go right up there if need be. You also have a little Velcro thing here, so you can Velcro a privacy curtain there as well. So let's talk about the kitchen. So the first thing on the kitchen as you come in the door, this is where you're going to turn your battery, coach batteries on. That way there, if you're not plugged, if you're plugged into power or driving down the road, you have that on, what that does is recharge your batteries. You can turn that on if you're not plugged in and all your 12 volt systems would work. Now in the event that you felt that you needed to have an inverter put in here, 1200 watt inverter, that is something to be, uh, that can be done and then we just figure out what outlets you want to utilize uh, for that. Now again, because this thing's set up more for boondocking, you can see that you're going to have 12 volt there and then two USBs. Again, USBs, they're on the 12 volt system, so they're going to be directly to the batteries. Then you have your light switches here, one for the outside, one for the inside. Now, for your refrigerator, this is a Novacool, it's a 12 volt refrigerator, so in order to run it, you're going to have to have your coach batteries on. Now, obviously, if you're plugged in, it's still running on 12 volt, but keep in mind, as you drive down the road, you're recharging your batteries, and that way there, it's, it's working. Now, the nice thing about the Novacool being 12 volt, it's not going to, it's only going to take a couple hours for it to cool down. Unlock it, that was the travel lock there. You can see you have places to put some eggs. Nice big shelves there. And then, of course, you do have a freezer. And notice this thing does come with a little ice maker. You just put a little water in there, and you'll have some ice. I don't know about you, but I don't drink the water when I'm out camping, so I'll just use regular bottled water. To turn it on, you're just going to turn your temperature control right here, 7 being the coldest. As you can see, you hear the compressor come on right there. And when you want to shut it off, just turn it off. Now also looking at the kitchen, you have this little cutting board right here that pulls out. Be sure that once you put it back in that you do latch it in place to keep it from falling out. So that could be additional counter space, you could use it as a prep area and so forth. Now in order to use your propane cooktop, or any propane for that matter, either that or your Truma, let me show you what you need to do first. So on your passenger side of the motorhome, this is where you actually fill up your LP tank. And as you can see, it's right here. First thing you're going to want to do after it's full is you're going to want to turn on your LP system here. That's the emergency shutoff. So you need to have that on before anything's going to work from the inside. Next, as you come in the door, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to come over to this area here and turn your LP on as well. So you got to have it on in two locations before it's going to start anywhere. One other thing I would tell you before you would turn your Truma water heater or heater on, on the propane side, I would tell you to make sure that you light the burners here. Now the nice thing on these burners is you actually just turn this and you see how that just comes on that easy. So it's a little, it's a little electric sparker. If you like these burners, that way there you're making sure that you have LP in through the, the lines, less chance you're going to have a problem with the Truma lighting. Now the nice thing that they have with this cooktop, the way they have it designed, when you're not utilizing it, that's extra counter space for you. So you can see for your sink, moving down here, nice high rise faucet tucks out of the way nicely little storage bin above it, keep different items up there for you. You decide what you'd like to put up there. Also notice that this would be convenient for your bed and or, you know, coffee maker and so forth. And again, 12 volt USB connectors right there as well. 
So let's talk about these switches that you have right here in front of your um, uh, your sink here. This particular one here, this is going to be a light. It's a fresh tank level light. So that way there, you'll be able to tell how much fresh water you have in the tank. Next thing, you have the Eco Hot. This is for your water heater. Let's say that you're going to want to go ahead and open a spigot and you want to make sure you have hot water sitting there waiting for you. What you do is, you'll see it says normal when it's straight up and down, and it says preheat over the side. So you will turn it to the preheat for about 6 to 10 seconds, and once you're done there, turn it back to normal. What's happening is it goes ahead and it'll circulate the water through the water lines so that once you turn your faucet on there, you'll have hot water there. Now I know you're, what you're saying. You're saying, well, Paul, what if I don't do that? What if I just have it in the normal mode? What's going to happen? Just like water at your house, when you turn it on initially, it's going to be a little cool and it'll take a few moments for it to get hot. Simple as that. Now let's discuss the, or let me show you the storage you're going to have in the kitchen. So the first cabinet here, right here, this has an adjustable shelf in it, as you can see. Quite nice, nice and deep. They do latch closed, not going to be coming open while you're driving down the road. Next one here, again, notice how it has a magnet to hold it on the roof. They, as a matter of fact, they all have, have that little magnet. So if you're wondering what this little metal piece is here, there are magnets on the roof holds it up that way there you're not having to use your head to hold those up while you're putting things away or getting things out now let's check the storage here you have on under your kitchen counter you're going to have a full extension drawer glide there nice thing that way there you can reach the things in the back when it's when it's out and then this is going to be the storage underneath your sink here and you can see the fresh fresh water tank is back behind there and I'm going to show you where the dump valve is for that and then you have a GFI protected 110 outlet right here in the kitchen as well now because that one's there that's your GFI I am sure that this is on that circuit for you as well now let's take a look at the wet bath which is actually what's setting it apart from the competition. As you can see that opens up quite nicely, nice and wide, giving you really good storage in here. Notice how you have different levels here. So just like in the Travado, this is very similar. I'm sure you could get those racks to set them in here if you wanted to turn this into a closet instead of using it as a shower and or uh, toilet. Now this is a cassette potty toilet. I'm going to show you where you empty that on the outside, but it's also your um, it is also your shower, so it's a wet wet bath as we call it. Now this pole up top here is not a chin up bar. This is something you remove if you wanted to go ahead and um, stand up in here use a shower but then you could utilize that to hang clothes in here if you wish notice how right over here you get a nice little area where you can go ahead and hide your toilet paper so it doesn't get wet now this is a heater in here but it has a little valve on it so that if you're wanting to you can go ahead and close it so you're not getting water in there when you're taking a shower now there's a little light switch right here before you open up the door and as you can see, when you open it, when you're closing the door, it has a magnet on the top that's going to hold it, hold that back part, and then you have the twist lock on this side. So as it goes in, it latches, and then this is what secures it, keeps it from opening while you're traveling. Notice how you have the vents coming out of there. So now there is no vent in the roof in here. Just want to show that to you but you do have the vents through the door and if you needed to you could always open up a window or door as you're utilizing that and turn on the power vent fan in the back now to finish off the kitchen you know what are you supposed to do if you want to eat right well notice how they're going to tuck your table 
and the table leg right behind the seat there tucked quite nicely out of the way now that is going to come off and that actually attaches right there now before I show you how that works I'm going to show you what's up underneath the seat as well as what's in underneath that door right there so as you can see you have a step up right here and that's to make it go level with the rest of the, the cab there so but right here this actually comes off you have a little bit of storage right under there and it does go a little bit this way that way so you can see the two by fours up underneath there that gives you a nice little storage so as you see underneath your dinette you have a 110 outlet and again usb and 12 volt and then another 110 outlet gfi protected right here in that step right there and then of course another heat duct the truma system by the way another heat duct there and then of course that's ventilation for the water heater the truma water heater furnace but the truma water system and the heater system is such a quiet system so and i'll tell you once you once you have that truma you're going to have a hard time going back to something else now for the seats here notice how they're both three-point seat belts so there is no t um, seat belt tether for a car seat if you were to put one there it's just a three-point seat belt but these are these are um car type seats so a little bit more sturdy and they do have a little bit of storage underneath it and the way you do it is you have this little yellow handle here you pull that it lifts up and it'll lock in place now there's your little storage now also under the seat is going to be the truma system and also your low point drains as well as your fresh water tank drain just want to give you an idea where they are trying to get you a good show you so you have your low point drains down here the le yellow lever to the left is for your fresh water tank drain and then you have your red and the blue those are for your water water heater bypass as well as your low point drains so that is all right underneath of this seat here so in order to pull the seat back down again you're just going to lift up on this lever seat comes right back down and then your armrest comes right back down as well so quite the nice seats there now both of these chairs here will spin around now my recommendation is when you're spinning these seats if you step outside it's probably the easiest thing so on the front you have the lever for moving the seat forward and back and then this is the leather lever right here you lift up on this as you spin the seat a little bit tight right now but as you use them it'll loosen up a little bit but you can spin both of these seats around so you can seat four people comfortably here now I like the way that they put this table this table works because the legs out of the way notice how there's no legs in the way here so sitting here I'm sitting in the driver's seat obviously the person sitting in the past seat is going to have a little bit longer reach uh, for this but uh, two people can sit comfortably there and this makes a nice little place for you to hang out nice little W right here this is so you can hang a coat or hang something on it so it's, it's you can just have it as decorative or you can actually have it to utilize for something now i showed you where you should be um checking the water level for your fresh water tank this is where you'd be checking it for your gray right here then you have your battery power and your lp is right here now you could check your lp underneath but it'd be kind of hard to do you have a water pump switch here as well as the one out back that i showed you earlier and then this is your truma water heater so this is the back button when you turn it on here so the blinking van that would be for your coach heat and then the thermometer there with the little water symbols around it that would be for turning on your water heater and you're going to turn it on for either propane and or uh, electric so that is your truma it's a truma combo eco so a very good system is going to work well and give you uh, plenty of heat plenty of hot water this is going to be where you, your solar panel is controlled so you control that right there and then this is for your tank heaters that's where you'll do that this is the sensor right here for your thermostat well that'd be for your thermostat for the heat part so that's all right there one last storage bin you have here and that's right here and that goes right there notice how they put that nice big 
metal thing in the way, keep longer things from falling out as you open these. Like how they think of the little things, makes a huge difference. This window is going to work the same way where you're able to unzip this. As you can see, as I'm sitting here, you can unzip it very easily. And if you want to roll it up, you can roll it and it would stuff right in there. But then that way there allows you to be able to use your window for ventilation. Now let's say you wanted to take these off. These things are just Velcroed, so you can actually take them off the wall and have just your window if you wanted to. But it does make for nice dark room darkening shades when you're camping. Your Dodge part pretty much stayed the same. Nothing really have changed up here. Just want to kind of explain a little bit about the, how this key fob works. So I want to talk to you about this key fob right here. In order to open the key, just push the round button there. It'll open quite nicely. That's what you'll be inserting in the ignition. This top button, this is what unlocks your driver and passenger door. The one in the middle, that locks everything. The unlock button down the bottom only unlocks your sliding door and the rear door. So if you're trying to come in, the, in those doors, that's the one you do. This is for your passenger and your driver door. Now let's talk about the outside a little bit here. Not much going on out here, but you do have a light. So you can light up your area if you want to. You're going to have one on this side as well as one over here so that if you're over here you're having to empty your cassette toilet or hook up your sewer hose which is going to be right down here that's for your gray tank or even hooking up your electrical cord that's right on this side and that's a nice uh, bright light as well so to kind of give you an idea how tinted the windows are and as we're looking at the back here you will have a hitch receiver with a four-way plug that is back here capable of 3,500 pounds is what it's saying. I will have all the specs and so forth down below. I know this thing has a gross vehicle weight rating of 8,900 pounds with a gross combined of 11.5 and a cargo carrying capacity of just under 1,900 pounds. So although the hitch is rated for 3,500, you don't necessarily have that total amount available. Now the backup camera is going to be right there and that is just all it is, it is a backup camera. It is not a rear observation camera like on some of the other uh, motorhomes. So I'm on the door side here, I want to show you what's underneath here. So you do have, that is a sewer hose storage uh, bin here for you, so you can keep it out of the way. Also under here, this is your, you're going to have one AGM battery in front of the axle, the other one behind it. Notice there's no generator, okay? And then of course, you, you can see you have your LP tank up in the front middle there. And of course, this is where you're going to be filling that fresh, uh, your LP tank. Now when you're filling your fresh water tank from from uh, the back, right here, you see this little blue tube right there. That is your overflow valve. So when water is coming out of it, you know your fresh water tank is full. Now earlier I talked about there being another uh, outside shower location, and that's right here. It's really not outside. It's not that you're going to use it inside, but you can actually hook that hose up here, and that way there on your door side here, you can be you know, cleaning yourself off and so forth. So it's both hot and cold water. Now, just to go over a couple other items with this coach, this is considered a four-season coach because all the water systems are above the floor and it's heated in that area. Now, on top of that, this is actually insulated basically the same way the Travato is, your Bolt, the Revel. Okay, it's automotive insulation that's fit, fitted in through the wall system. So you're going to find it to keep you very warm when need be. Um, understand you, no AC, but you do have that power vent fan to go ahead and be able to draw air through it. Your floor is insulated as well. So now to give you some other information pertaining to the bed up top, the ladder itself is rated at 225 pounds with the bed area up top rated at 450 pounds. 
So hopefully that helps you out with that information. Like I say, if you have any questions and so forth, by all means, feel free to write them down below. My email's there, my phone number's down there. Feel free to reach out to me and I'll be sure to get back to you. As you can see, everything is very easily accessible under the hood. So now it's that time you have to empty your cassette potty. All you're going to be doing is reaching in here, there's a little blue thing there, a lever that you need to pull up on right there, and that'll un unhook it from inside. Then you also have a little handle, so that way there, if you need to go over to, um, if you need to wheel it over to a location, a dump station, you're able to wheel it over there. But in the event that you're right there at the dump station, you're just going to pull it out. What you have is, on the top, you can see, these are things dealing with it from when it's inside, because it's going to be dumping into the toilet here. Through the toilet, it goes into your here. What happens is you're going to use this, and obviously you're going to want to have some gloves, but you're going to just take this cap off, and you'll dump it into, you know, the dump station itself. Now what you're going to need to do is clean it out. Now if you want, you can go ahead and run some water in there to rinse it out a few times. The other thing you could do is, you can pull this part off here, be careful when you do this, and then you're gonna, you get to turn this. Now that is opened, and you're gonna be able to rinse it out this way and dump it. To put it back together, again, all you're gonna do is you're gonna turn that back there. This will slide right back on here. It only goes one way. And when you're, what happens is, as you push it in there, this thing is gonna pull away, so that way there as you're dumping, it's going into your tank. So before you put it back in there, what you're gonna to wanna to do is put a little bit of water in there as well as some chemical. Now you might be asking, Paul, when I flush the toilet, where are we getting water? Great question. What's happening is this is hooked up to your fresh water tank for, for this um, unit here. So you're, it doesn't have like the old cassette toilets you see on pop-ups where they had their own water source. This is taken from your actual fresh water tank for the Solus. It's that simple. Now just for, for those of you that may not realize this, your parking brake is actually on the door side, the driver's door side, and it pulls up here. The reason why I guess they put it there is that way there it's not in the way when you spin the seat around. I know Mercedes has a way of, of doing theirs. Now on the driver's door, this is where you're going to see, and I'm going to turn this sideways so you can actually see it. You can see this is where you're going to have your actual cargo carrying capacity, which is 1800 and 69 pounds. Down below that sticker, that is your gross vehicle weight rating and so forth. So there you have it ladies and gentlemen, the all brand new, this is the Solus from Winnebago. This is the 59P. Uh, they are working another floor plan as well. Not out yet, but uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Tell me what you're thinking. You liking it? You're not liking it? Is this something that would work for you? And if I can help you out at all, be sure to reach out to me and keep one thing in mind. If you're calling, if you're emailing, or if you're stopping by Beckley's Camping Center, be sure you ask for Paul the Air Force guy. Thanks again, and I'll be back at you again soon. Take care.